Good afternoon. This is the Oxford Downtown Diaries. I think I got that out smoothly today. You got it right today. I did. We're the di- dynamic duo. <laughs> now I'll screw up for you. I passed it on. <laughs> uh, Kelly Westbrook, Kimberly Smith, we're excited to have another committee member on with us this week. Yeah. So we had to pre-record this one because I'll be at the National Conference down in Alabama. But we're excited today to have Scott Cree with us. Yeah. Scott Cree is just so many levels of things. Oh, he's so much fun. He's like an onion. We unpeel a layer every time we meet him. But he uh, he works for Oakland County. He's the chair of our design committee. He is a stellar volunteer and he makes us laugh. So we like him. We'll keep him around. We'll keep him around. Hi, Scott Cree. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Thanks for uh, having me to the show. Oh, that was a great, great radio voice there. That was pretty good. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I get that from my brother. He's uh, he's a news broadcaster. Is he really? Anchorman. Oh, no kidding. Maybe you missed your calling. Probably not. Probably not. Okay. <laughs> they could be the dynamic duo, too. There you go. <laughs> what is your calling? Because now you work for Oakland County as a planner, which I don't feel like I still know exactly what that means. But you have a diverse background, architecture, and things of that. So tell us... Who is Scott Cree? All right. Um, so I was born. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Not that far yeah, back. Yeah, not that far back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was. I was version. actually. Um, I I wanted to be an architect ever since I was uh in third grade. I drew the Empire State Building in pencil and detailed all the windows and stuff. And my parents were like, "You should be an architect." And then started exploring like uh, Frank Lloyd Wright and Yamasaki and Saarinen and all that stuff. And and I got into Lawrence Tech. And, um, but then I became a planner because <laughs> I found planning while I was at school. Oh. So it was part of our uh, integrated design studio. It was the fourth integrated design studio, and I was taking night classes and also working at an architecture firm at the time out in Brighton called Lindhout Associates. Um, I was there for about 14 years um, before uh, becoming a planning consultant. I was a planning consultant for a number of years. Um, up in the, well, I had like 15 different clients. Um, small small villages and townships mostly in mid to eastern Michigan. Um, I worked with Roe and then I left there and came to the county to be the county planner. I've been the county for seven or eight years. Um, so my job right now, um, it, it, it's gotten less and less exciting, I guess. As 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 uh, as life gets is that up. because you're used to it or why? No, um, well, obviously there was a whole design element with the uh, architecture thing, um, especially when I was at that firm at Lindhout, and they were great, um, because I was there for a number of years and I got to like run a couple projects. I got to design stuff that actually got implemented. Um, had meetings with, uh, you know, uh, basically people that wanted to build stuff. We had schematic designs and stuff that they would sign off on so you actually get to see it from paper to present of uh how how a design would really evolve and that was part of part of my hard some of the hard things i had to deal with when i was going through lawrence tech because a lot of it was theory and i was already working in the real world so i had a i had a huge issue with that because that's not how the like we would have professor- that's not how it works yeah we have a professor that would crumple up a ball of paper he's like design this and you're like he's wearing a beret <laughs> so, uh, I'm like, and there was like no budget, you know, and that's just not how the world really works. And mm-hmm. I also saw a bunch of my bunch of stuff when I was at the firm um, get value engineered out just because it was too expensive. And that's also part of that. And now you have to work with the DDA in our budget, which yeah. is zero. I mean, next to nothing. <laughs> so, and that was a unique thing, like making that transition from architecture to planning. Um, and obviously, I cha- I did that in school. I went from Lawrence Tech to Eastern and then graduated from Eastern. And um, that that worked out well for me because if you can't beat them, join them. So I do know where the developer and uh, the client or the, per- the property owner is coming from. And then I understand uh, zoning laws and restrictions and stuff like that and how to make those more um, comparable to people that want to get want to get the job done. So. So no um, wonder you wanted to join the design committee and have fun again, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> design committee is fun. It is, for sure. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> fun is where you make it. Yeah. That's right. So we've done some crazy projects since you've become chair. Do you want to 
talk about some of those? Yeah, sure. I mean, some of them, um, you know, were already in the works. And um, what I like to say is that Kelly has a has an idea, and then she kind of brings it to us, and then we figure it out. Uh, you know, within within the restraints of this the budget. This is the same thing Kimberly the, says too. And the real, yep, in the real world, like there's no pixie dust. Um, so <laughs> you gotta. But um, no, it's been it's fun. Um, <laughs> obviously, my my history of working at an architecture firm and working with the city of Brighton and all their DDA stuff. I worked very closely with the late Matt Modrak and um, that, uh, that basically taught me a lot and was uh, able to, uh, I was able to basically utilize those skills. And I like that because I do have a creative side that I don't really get to utilize as much anymore in my day to day work. I write a lot of stuff that no one reads. No but poetry or anything. No, oh, okay. No. Yeah, but I wasn't sure where you were going with that. Break open diary. <laughs> no. Yeah, I could be sitting on a stool. Yeah, with your beret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I I do bring some different ideas into the design committee, and usually it's me texting Scott first and saying, "Hey, is this even possible?" Yeah. I usually get a no right off the bat, and no. then that's his I mean, default. It's, it's true. <laughs> But then, you know, he figures it out. I mean, we were yeah. building scarecrow posts this past fall. I was just fall. thinking about, ta- yes, that was instrumental in helping us. But you designed year. them, yeah. and it really was such a great thing for the community because come to find out the business owners wanted to decorate and make scarecrows every year, but they didn't have a way to stabilize them, especially mm-hmm. on an M24. So you figured out a design. You taught us how to use tools. Yeah, and that was uh, that was fun. I'm glad to be able to use those for years to come. Some people kind of uh, made them their own too. Yeah, I noticed that some they made some modifications. Arms were missing. Yeah, ones on yeah. wheels like yeah. roller skates or something. Yeah. Um, no, they are it's, heavy. Yeah, it's good. I'm I'm glad I can I'm glad I can help. The uh, funny thing was is that um, my wife actually found this on the mom chat or something on Facebook that you were looking for an opening, which is odd because. I worked with you guys before that, but I'm always just, you know, the guy at the county who's helping out the Main Street. You were the guy at the county. The funny mm-hmm. thing is, is guy at the county walked into my office like three years That's ago right. from the restaurant grants that we were doing. And you were dropping off sanitizer, yeah. I think. And you're like, hey, I'm Scott Cree. I'm like, cool, because <laughs> I had no idea who you were. And then, lo and behold, three years later, you're on our design committee and now chairing it. Yeah. yeah. So I've been I've been having fun. We have a really good. We have a really good group. Um, we have a big group. It's and a design. Large the one, the one group, thing yeah. I like, yeah, the one thing I like about design committee is, um, you know, you got the before and after. You got the work up to it, and then there's usually an outcome of some sort of substance that yeah. you've created as a team. Um, and we have a diverse background of people that are on that committee that I really appreciate. And um, for the most part, everyone, everyone makes it to the meetings. They have input. Um, that's because and you I send like out it. emails, very long emails that tell them to show up. And you do, well, you know. And we, notes. Yeah, we talked about this in our last um, podcast with Ashley around the structure of the meeting. And just, you know, I, I kind of sit in more so now because we have the space in our office to be able to host some of these committee meetings. Mm-hmm. But um, what I have seen from an evolution standpoint is, the structure and the organization of the de- design committee has really taken off. And so I think that helps people want to be at the meetings and want to give their input and want to be part of something when it's, you know, well-oiled in that way. So thank you for your contributions oh, yeah. in that in that area. The, the meeting minutes, the notes, the agenda, the emails, the communication, you're very, very good with that kind of stuff. Are you type A at all? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, just, I'm. I was just asking. I mean, I I don't know. I guess it's all in the eye of the beholder. I mean, I'm, I'm an out. I like people. That's my thing. Like, and especially where I work, like it's very quiet, and I'm the guy that walks around and says hi to everyone, you know, and and I like that. Now, some people don't like that. Yeah. And those are people I don't say hi to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you figure that out from the beginning. Very and plus, I, I like to make and I like to make people laugh. I mean, we're only on this earth for a short time so might yeah. as well make the most of it 
And so where is design committee going? So we've gotten a ton of projects done this year. Mm -hmm. Can we break into ARPA funding because you get it and you understand it and you've helped us a I don't lot? Know if I get it, but um, yeah, did we you have... just air quotes me? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, so I mean, design committee. We have we have a lot of things that are going on. Obviously, um, Washington Square is always something that we like to keep on the button. We're we're always looking for other things to do to do there. Um, especially with the acoustics and trying to make it a space that can be versatile no matter what's going on in it. Um, so we have some things in the works, which I don't know. Am I allowed to talk about it? Yeah, I, I don't talk know about it. Yeah, yeah, for okay, sure. So we have like some rolling planters and stuff that we're going to be uh, having built for us. And then um, some greenery that will have uh, basically add acoustic values um, to that space. Right now we have especially with traffic coming in from the north um the the sound just reverberates off off the walls it's a great it's a great space but um if we can do anything to help the with the acoustics in that area that's always helpful but also washington square is funny because it kind of sells itself because it is open to m24 for washington and and so people are always not not that it's a it's an issue. I mean, they're usually sitting at a traffic light, but they're kind of rubbernecking. Like they're they want they want to know what's going on in there, and obviously with uh, Toss and Tuesdays, and uh, our the square league is coming and the square dancing. And Scott's very excited about the cornhole league. So excited, um, but that's good. I mean, you you have something going on every every day. You got the old car show. Um, so just just as long as we can uh, make that space as um, comfortable as possible and versatile as possible. And that's, uh, we've been leaning towards that a lot. Um, yeah, you brought in a lot of um, influence, I think, on the new planters and things of that nature because we just didn't know where to go from a sound perspective in the square. You know, we still don't own the lot, so things have to be movable and ever-changeable. And so I think that your idea of having these there, I think it's going to make a big difference. And we found somebody local to build them. And we'll have volunteers out. When's our next spring 24th, cleanup? 24th, I believe. 24th, 24th of May? 24th. Okay. Yeah. And that's when we'll plant in them and set them out. So I think yeah. they're going to be a big deal out there. Yeah. And I was, you know, and uh, this past winter, well, during between the Scarecrow Fest and Christmas, we were able to get that truck mm -hmm. out there. Talk which... about the truck. I have a deep love for the truck. <laughs> so this was one of those. I mean, usually, usually Kelly or Kimberly will float an idea. But um, I had this idea because we go out to Upland Hills all the time uh, as a family, and we always take a picture on this wagon with all these mums on it. And I'm like, it would be neat if we had something like that in, in the square and maybe like an old truck. And then uh, Kelly just took it and ran with it. She, <laughs> she made like, it Apparently happen. she I found, found a truck. <laughs> she found a truck and, um, and was able to uh, get it out there. And uh, the owner was very nice and let us keep it through mm -hmm. past past we were just going to have it for fall but then we were able you know we, we made the recommendation if we could keep it through christmas yeah. and throw some Chris, christmas trees on it and put a fake santa in it or something like that but it worked out it was really cool. well we had i don't know how many christmas cards i think we got a handful of christmas cards of people this year that very had their cool. pictures taken in front of that so that was nice so the next item for the design committee is the wind in Washington Square. I, think I don't we need know. To... It, uh, he's not God. He can't control <laughs> that. Sorry. This is true. <laughs> well, I don't know if he knows that. <laughs> yeah. So we're, I mean, technically the the sound barrier hedges that we're doing, those can cut down on some That'll of the help. wood. That will okay. help. Um, especially if, if we also have some up against the wall. So yeah. Um, we're starting out small uh, just because of our budget and, you know, seeing if it works. And if we get more, that's great. We yeah. can put some on the wall and then still create them as barriers and, make, and kind of make that space a little bit private or whatever, depending on the need. And that in itself could cut down on the wind. But it is also in true, true fashion of a DDA design board, it's trial and error. Yeah. Like yeah. we don't know. I mean, even even the. Uh, the activities you have for the kids, like the cornhole and stuff like that, like some of that stuff has not, hasn't even been able to last a year just because people are hard on stuff. Yeah. 
And, and the weather too, yeah. Michigan weather. And people don't put stuff away, and it's yeah. not theirs. And we um, talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. So, and and we take, you know, the design committee. We try to take that into account. Um, I I designed a lot of stuff in the in the public realm, and so you just want to make it like tamper proof. There's only three bad kids in Oxford, as I always That's say right. in our meeting. <laughs> it's only three. And there's only three bad kids, and they like to mess with everything. Yeah. And so if you you know if you you can find a way to deter them from doing that, whether it's, you know, hiding fasteners or, or making things so they aren't movable or able to mess up an area. Um, we'll, we'll get better and better at how we do that. We're also looking at walkability um, and the design committee right now. So we're trying oh, to get some... Oh, that's a good one to talk about. Yeah, we're trying to get some mid-block crossings. I did a sketch about a month ago, maybe, uh, because all of our... So on Burdick, on both East Burdick and West Burdick, we do have a lot of pedestrian traffic behind the buildings off of M24, largely because that's where our parking lots are. And um, so if we can get people to cross safely at, at the entrances to those parking lots or at Hudson Street, um, we're going to try to do that. Um, there is some engineering feats that we have to overcome, and um, we have to make sure those fit in the budget and curb cuts and make sure everything is ADA compliant so it's accessible to everyone. Um, but that's, that's, but something that's exciting. huge for our public spaces and the backs mm -hmm. of those buildings. So when we think about, you know, the new courtyard where wind down Wednesdays are going to be and the patio, big O, uh, where toss and Tuesdays will be, it's imperative that people can cross there. It's social district back in that area. So people can take their drinks from one quad to the next. Mm -hmm. So I, I am excited about the crosswalks. I never thought I'd be excited about crosswalks, but yeah. they're near and dear to our hearts. Yes, with yes. us and running. We need to get to the market, you know? Yeah, running back and forth from concerts to the market. I was actually thinking about this as we were coming here because our parking lot is under construction. And so I was like, it would be so nice to have a crosswalk yeah. here to get across the street to where we're parking now which would be in generally the same space that we're talking about. It right? would be close. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we, maybe we could do a temporary one for the, like the next month while we're. I mean, we have those areas where people aren't supposed to be stopping at the traffic lights and blocking intersections. So yeah. there's been, yeah. that's, that's basically the areas I've been trying to focus on. So if we do like a hatch pattern with, with a walkway through it and that's just paint, like it's pretty cheap. The problem is the, the curb. Yeah, it's the curb yeah. cuts. Like you need to make sure that if uh, someone is in a wheelchair or a walker, they can still utilize that. Mm -hmm. um, and that and that's the main. That's that's my main concern. We also have um, options for uh, Centennial Park, yeah. right? Right. Um, of fixing up the gazebo with some. There's so much to come. It's gonna be great. And hopefully, put a ramp ramp on the gaze on the existing gazebo to help um, with us obviously more ADA compliancy issues. Yeah. And so, one of the biggest things that you guys do though, that we haven't mentioned, but we did mention it in our last podcast is all of the signage and facade grants. So design right. committee is really tasked with uh, making the recommendation to the board of how much we should give to each business. And I mean, a lot goes into it. Do you want to talk a little bit about that process? Yeah. Um, you know, Kelly, Kelly and Kimberly are funny because they will <laughs> accept an application like two hours before our meeting, um, which is sometimes we're people, people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we're here for the people. You know, so, the uh, sometimes sometimes that's like, wow, okay, I guess we're doing this, and I'll change the agenda last minute. But other than that, um, no, I'm it's sorry, great. Did you say you were not Type A earlier? Yeah, just just I clarify. just like I'm to just, say hi to people. <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to get my meeting minutes in on time. Here. Um, so anyways, with that being said, though, um, there is a uh, – the community knows that they can they can go to the DDA and basically get help in a, in a grant setting, whether it's facade or, or sign. And um, we have a good – as I said before, we have a really good committee. Uh, we look at everything and uh, make an educated recommendation. Usually it's uh, for an amount not to exceed, so we are conscious of the budget. And, you know, we're just recommendary. But um, it's nice because um, we have, well, Catherine 
Catherine and Sue usually make the two, <laughs> you share the two that are, are helping with the uh, recommendations. So we appreciate that. But um, everyone else, everyone else chips in. We all add our 10 cents. I mean, there's times that, you know, it wasn't, they need to go back to the drawing board and we make that decision kind of to recommend that they don't proceed until they change a couple things. And not heavy, heavy handedly. Um, I, th I think we, uh, we all have the best interests of the DBA and, and the village of Oxford at heart. And I think you guys are willing to preserve the historic nature of the downtown too. And that's one thing that I love about the committee is everybody seems to respect that and want to continue that, which is a big deal because if we had a bunch of people here who didn't care, or just wanted change, it would be a lot different and we'd see a lot of different things mm -hmm. going on in the buildings downtown. Well, even, and even for the acceptance of wanting, but not wanting change, you know, there's, there's an issue there too. Um, so it's a fine, it's a, it's a fine balance that we have to do because as the village becomes this, as, as Kelly has said, this Hallmark movie <laughs> setting, um, which is which is good, you know. I mean, it's well, it's, it quaint, be. it's picture perfect. But the thing is, is that at the same time, to be able to keep that that quality of the product that you're putting out there, which is the village itself and and how it looks, and and the retailers and the restaurants, and and basically being able to keep that as it is, but still allow it to grow, and also and allow be it to modern, a little right. more modern, because I think you know you have different groups of people you have the group that really leans toward the historical piece of it and then you have the group that wants to see more modern pieces kind of come in and you know change it a little That's bit a hard so balance it is it's yeah. a hard balance especially yeah. when Kimberly and I are getting about a thousand emails and phone calls a week with you know a lot of those being opinions yeah. of what should be happening or right. what something should, should look like yeah happening. and you're not yeah. and you're not alone in that um, being in my role at the county, I deal with at least 62 of our communities in Oakland County, and then there's technically 88 if you count the ones that border the county. So um, that is that is not unheard of. I mean, obviously, you know, squeaky wheel gets the grease, as cliche as that sounds. Um, people are going to, people are, if they, if they have a, a way to access you, they will. Huh. Let's <laughs> so. take our email and our phone number <laughs> and everything. We've, but we've reduced it's, our touch right. points. But it's not all. It's not all bad. I mean, sometimes people do have glaring concerns that should be should be addressed. Um, I know at the design committee level, we've we've heard a couple of them come through and like, oh yeah, we didn't think about that, or or we should think about that, or we need to do something about that. And that's the, you just have to kind of pivot in those moments. It, at least show like. That you're uh, you're trying to make a, a positive difference to even if it's just a small group of people, maybe yeah. the, maybe the complaint in large is going to be something that is a bigger complaint down the road. Sure. So the fu the future planning uh, is is unique to the design committee. Putting the planning piece in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of the biggest things that came out of design committee this year, and we actually applied for an award through the Main Street program for it is the lighting on the rooftops mm -hmm. which so excited to see finally come alive I think we've talked about it now for about two and a half years man you get to be chair on the design committee and it happens what the heck no, that's that's not me um, <laughs> yeah you group. really didn't have anything to it's do a, with it it's a group effort and um and you know it's funny because even as design committee members like certain ones of us will notice differences are, are things that we want changed so like originally we only did like the horizontal mm -hmm. and yep. not the vertical and the vertical completes it obviously um but the other thing is is that um the facades in downtown are very unique and they go in and out and up and down and so um trying to get the light to capture all that i mean good job to excel for yeah being they were able, awesome being able to capture all that um i mean ideally i would love to put lights over m24 which mm -hmm. I think I've told you about because they have done it in other communities over M dot highways, and I don't know why they won't let us do it. So M dot, um, if you're listening, yeah. please, yes, please, please let us do our it. request. Yeah, it's, and we have, you know, we have a smaller downtown than Port Huron where you mm -hmm. allowed it. For and, example, yeah, for example. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, <laughs> so you know we have cut your mic off <laughs> too. 
we have we have uh we just have aspirations and i think that would be neat and i don't think it's going to cause an issue but you do notice like what's unique about that outline um project that we did was you, you do notice it and yeah. you get different mm -hmm. angles depending on how you come in because of washington m24 washington how it's on an angle and so it looks different depending on what intersection you're at um it's unique like sometimes you don't realize a building had a certain i mean that's the architect it really does draw your me, you know, eye up to the parapets and yep. stuff yeah um so yeah that was that was awesome and uh as i said like when i was at the uh scarecrow fest and that was before the lighting project but there was people here from all over there was people here from sterling heights there's people here from clio mm -hmm. that i ran into like they were just happy to be here and they it was a beautiful weekend too oh, it was so yeah nice. and so they nice. asked they're like where's a good place to eat now i have my favorite what did you recommend we i already know i'm at the tap i was gonna say i'm at the tap like once a week almost there you go but vip um, he texted me the other day he goes hey did you notice that the tap got new bar yeah, stools? And I'm like, because I was out of town. I was, I was, I was out of town uh -huh. for work, so I didn't notice. And then what they did was they put the old chairs at the other tables, so now everyone has a back. Oh, well, that's fun. That yeah. is good. So good, kudos to them. <laughs> for us yeah. old folks, so you I, gotta I, lean so, back. So I'm not lying, but I did stay there a little bit longer. I mean, I was like the last last person out the other night. <laughs> so speaking of that, Scott, what do you do in your free time? Why did you why did you pick Oxford to live okay. and play and kind of work? Okay. Um, so I grew up in Brighton, Michigan, and uh, my dad moved us out there from Livonia when I was like six. And um, Brighton in the in the eighties and nineties was um, remind me a lot of Oxford now. Small town. It isn't anymore, but it was at that time. And Oxford still is and part of the I think part of the reason is is that Oxford doesn't have a freeway running through it, which is helpful, and and not helpful when I'm trying to get down to Nova, right? And get down there in a fortnight. Um, so, and then my wife, she got a job. She's a school psychologist for Oxford Community Schools, and so we were living in Grand Blank. We had a beautiful ranch out there, but um, we just didn't have that community. Young people. There was a lot of sixty-year-olds and ninety-year-olds in our neighborhood. And uh, the 90-year-olds were, you know, one of our neighbors, they were like 90, like, oh, we saw a really nice young couple. And they were like 65. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess that is a really nice young couple. Uh, but anyways, so we wanted somewhere. And then I was traveling a lot for work because I was a, a consultant with Roe at the time. So we needed someone close to the kids. And I had a, a preemie and a, and a two-year-old or whatever we had. So we decided to move out to Oxford and um and I had driven through Oxford growing up we had a we had a cottage in Caseville so sometimes I'd come down this way depending on who I was dating that lived this way <laughs> um what nothing <laughs> go on so anyways um do you want to do any shout outs real quick no 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 <laughs> shout out, no shout outs there I mean I'm friends with all my exes on my Facebook so <gasps> I think uh, that's the song all my exes live in Texas yeah okay um so yeah so we love it and uh we've embraced it and obviously um even through the hard times uh we're still here we're here to st we're here to stay um i don't see us going anywhere and then uh so yeah I, I love it and i'm glad i can be part of I'm, I'm glad i can be part of certain things obviously with my job i have to be careful of what i can participate in like i would love to be on a you know i could i could be on a planning commission but i can't because i review basically the stuff that comes out of the planning yeah. commission so if i lived in a different county or if i worked for a different county i'd be okay mm -hmm. but i don't have that uh, opportunity so i'm glad i can help out where i can here um and then kelly uh our kids are in the same first grade first, first grade. grade you look at me like is that right sorry i was okay. told there'd be no math today sure oh there is none so what do you do in your free time then? Uh, my free time, so we have a boat. Uh, my wife and I have a boat on uh, Lake Orion that we like to go. Uh, Gasp. I'm, I also, uh, COVID, I turned my garage into a bar, so that's kind of like a hangout. You have a Google, It's a social club. Yeah, it's a social club. Shh. Yeah, you don't want to promote your side <laughs> I don't business? Want to okay. I don't want to promote it. Okay. He doesn't so, need random yeah. showing up at his speak, house. It's a speakeasy. It's a speakeasy. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, you have to be No, but it's 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 excellent. Invited. Um the people, um my neighbors and friends, uh it's it's uh, basically a third fourth living space. 
and it has access to the front yard so we can just like watch the kids play mm -hmm. we have a pretty good sized front yard that the kids love to play soccer and football in um you so, like the wings at the tap yeah yep tap wings tap wings extra grilled usually i get 25 and then i have a ton in my freezer oh they have, you can do that yeah the only reason why i bought a air fryer was because of tap wings oh because what you do is you just put a cool. little bit of canola oil on them if you don't freeze them you just put them in there for five to seven minutes okay depending on how dark you want them and you put some canola oil on them, oil on them and they're perfect okay and then if you freeze them you got to put them in for like maybe 10 minutes or something so we're getting recipe advice today on i our know podcast. i love this this new yeah. um section of our yeah should we <laughs> should we just put this in every show i, I think so i, like I mean this i like idea. I like 24th Street. I like the I like the Ox. I love Sullivan's. It's fine. We all have a favorite. It's yeah. okay. Sullivan's like I I got I have Kilkenny on tap right now, and that's what I drink. I either drink Red Breast or Kilkenny at, at Sullivan's. Those are my two go tos. He knows. He knows. We're not allowed to share our favorites because no. everybody's our favorite. Of course, but you're allowed. You are. So do you? I thought I heard your. Do you coach? I do coach. You're, what do you coach? Do you coach well? Let's just ask that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, with my son, I coached basketball this year with, uh, some of our friends. I, I have a couple, couple really great guys. I'm not going to name drop, but, um, I got some really good guy friends and all of our kids are the same ages. So we, we get to coach a lot together, which is great because a lot of us travel for work and have night meetings and stuff. So mm -hmm. there's always a coach there. Um, and then, uh, for softball, this is my fourth year coaching softball or t-ball it was t-ball now it's softball and it's kid pitch this year and um that's been great we have a great great team uh the girls are wonderful they listen and i recruited kelly to uh, one more come. thing that i'm recruited for yeah. well she came and helped the girls uh learn how to pitch because this is kid pitch this year mm -hmm. so we're just hoping no one gets hit with a ball in the face right um, or no one charges the mound. Uh, that was my first recommendation. Don't hit your friend in the face. Yeah. I think that's Did great Did you know advice. I used to be a softball pitcher? I learned this recently. Mm, okay, I me did. too. I know. Is she good? Yeah. I didn't I learned show them things. how to pitch, but I, I mean, I taught everybody. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> just to put this plug in that a ton of the girl, a bunch of the girls came up to us, and it's Kyle and I who are coaching, so it's two dads, and they're like, is Coach Kelly going to come back? She was great. Oh, that's like, sweet. I have yeah. to tell Kimberly, And then they thanked though. us. They thanked us for bringing her in. Smart I mean, girls. Just, just, they, well, just, yeah. No, but I have to tell you this. So they're introducing me in the circle of girls. And right, they're fourth and fifth graders. Yeah. So the eye rolls are present. And this one little one, the tiniest one on the team, just is hilarious. And they said, you know, we don't always know what we're doing. So we brought Kelly in to do the pitching. And she's like, yep, we know mm -hmm. that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because some of these girls have been on our team, I mean, for the last four years. Yeah. Like, they like the parents, like, you know, because mm -hmm. there's certain coaches out there, obviously, in sporting. You know how it gets. It gets very competitive, yeah. and parents, like, like to interject and stuff like that. But we've been blessed that our softball uh, parents have been just so easygoing. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're just we're just donating our time, basically. Yeah. But the girls are, they're good, they're good girls. Yeah. And, and they're, they they're, were they're good. Athletes. That's They're really fun. good girls. It's funny, though, because I feel like I have to say yes to volunteering yeah. because, like Scott, I had two other committee members come to me in, like, the last two weeks and ask me to volunteer for something. And I can't say no because you guys volunteer for us. I was us. just going to say and you I'm ask like, a lot of, of some people. Yes, yes. Scott so I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, I guess I can give my time yeah. back. That's good, though. Yeah, so we'll hopefully utilize you next week and then you'll be done. I'll then be we'll done. Have, well, done. then we have games until so we don't have any. the next thing. season. Yeah. So, anyways, it's it's been it's been fun, but you know, on those nights I don't, you know, you don't you don't go home and have a bourbon because you, you don't want to smell like bourbon. Oh, <laughs> oh, before before it got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You save that until after. Or or the next day. Yeah. Oh, that's very responsible of you. <laughs> Awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, we have to shut this down. So Scott, thank you for coming on. Thanks yes. for talking about design committee. We appreciate all of um, your hard work yeah. and just teaching us so much because honestly, like 
it seems like all fun and games here, but you are so oh. brilliant. And we have gotten a ton accomplished since bringing you on. So thank you. Okay. Um, I just want to note that this is recorded so you can refer back to this because this is the nicest you have been to Scott <laughs> since I've met you. <laughs> so this is... <gasps> Just it's in my contract. Well, I can't okay. be mean on air. No, I love it. No, we do. I mean, I tell you all the time, we could not do a quarter of the things that we do without your help. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Yeah, they run a gauntlet at that uh, DDA. Yeah, we I do. go in there. So. Cut, it, cut yeah. his mic off now. Right. <laughs> and we're off. And we're off. Oh, my gosh. I so love fun. having fun guests on this show. <laughs> well, Scott has a near and dear place in our hearts, I think, because he comes to visit quite a bit and he helps so much volunteering and with the committees um and he's so entertaining that we he he spends a lot of time in our office so yes we're we do get things like, done though we're like the three three's company is that what we were for we Halloween? did we did pitch yeah, that out yeah did. yeah it was fun so what else do we <laughs> have coming up no <laughs> that'll be our new theme song nope yep okay <laughs> So what's new since our last podcast? Well, I know we're double <laughs> recording today and we did talk about a lot, yeah. but I mean, I think that one thing that we should probably talk about is maybe the historic project that's coming up that oh, we're starting to, yeah. So yes. the interns are definitely going to be a yeah. huge help, yep. but it's really us getting it off the ground. Um, we took reference from our friends in Ligorian for a historic project and we've been talking about it for two years and- mm-hmm. Usually we get things done, I feel like, way faster, but there's so much history that goes into this one. Yeah. And that's because we are um, targeting historic buildings and homes in our downtown. And then we're really looking to the museum, um, Drew Holt, on this project to come up with the history of these buildings and what was there prior to the current businesses, um, who built them, and then to hopefully find some really great old pictures of them. And then we're going to create um, plaques that live on these buildings and have QR codes where somebody can scan them and go to that entire history of the building. I really hope that it increases the walkability Mm -hmm. of downtown, but also gets kids involved because I feel like so many kids miss out on the history of their small towns. You know, we go over so much of that in school, but not necessarily for where you live sure and i think we are blessed to have the museum right across the street from our office yes. they do such a phenomenal job of tracking that and sharing it with the community i just you know i we're so busy that i don't have the luxury of just following um sites frequently but i did notice that they do like a tuesday like yes. they'll throw out a picture of a building and have like clues and then the following week they'll give the the location. So that's been really cool. I thought that was a really neat thing that they do. Yeah. So I'm hoping that this will be able, this project with the QR codes can add to their site, but then also we can have all of that live on our site as well. Yeah. Do you want to talk about, do you want to tease what we're doing, what we just got approved at our last board meeting for where we're going with the DDA in the future? Oh, sure. Okay, sorry. I was like, um, that was two weeks ago. I can't yeah, think sorry. that far back. I know. So one of the things that we've been talking about over the past year that I'm very passionate about is creating a 501 within the DDA. And within this, I you did a ton of the, the work on this, so thank you. Um, but part of it is, you know, having a separate board of directors But this is a way for us to create an additional revenue stream within the DDA so that we can continue everything that we're doing, but add on additional projects that really it's a dream for us to grow the way we are. But our budget is so slim for a DDA. So this is a way for us to have additional funding where we don't have to wait, you know, eight to 10 years for a bigger project. We can do that now. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about the process that you went through? Sure. So we um, we were l- lucky for us. A lot of the DDAs in the surrounding communities have already gone through this process. So we have resources that we could utilize um, already in place. Um, so it was just a matter of reaching out to an attorney that is specialized in this area and going through that process. So we've initiated that. And we're looking at, I think at this point, maybe four to five months, and we should be able to have our new official 
nonprofit arm of the DDA. Yeah, and I'm excited because the whole process, it's it's not that costly, but it does cost a couple sure. thousand dollars. But we're able to utilize the tech dollars that we get from the Main Street program at the county. And that really helped us to be able to launch this and to pretty much sell it to our board yeah. and say, hey, this isn't coming out of our budget. Right. And also training for those that are going to be more involved, because as you mentioned, we need to have a new board of directors. We need to have new officers of this new nonprofit. And so making sure people understand what they're getting into, what the responsibilities are, and kind of get them ready to go for when we're ready to launch this. Yeah, somebody said the other day, and I, I had to laugh because they said, you know that this is going to cause more work for you two. Yeah. And I just laughed because I'm like, yes, but it's, worth it's for it. the community because yeah. we know that this can make a huge impact, especially in the long run. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's going to be some work up front and all the filing and the paperwork that goes into each yeah. year. But I think it's going to be great. Yeah, I think it's really exciting. So. Awesome. Well, I will be out of town for the next week in Bama uh, National Conference. So giving Oxford a shout out to um, every Main Street program across the U.S. will be there. And then we'll be back and we have to target some folks for May and come up with some of our new guests. But it should be good. And you're talking about Washington Square, right? Yeah, so I was chosen um, for a proposal that we submitted and that is um, taking empty space and making place. So I I got kind of cute on the words there, but really it is, right? We took a dirt parking lot and we made it into a place for all the fun things that we have planned this summer for the wonderful markets that our market master over here plans. And I'm excited to just share that entire process, but also some of the pain points that we went through with that process so that if other people are looking to do that, they don't have to go through those things. Right. So that'll be fun. We can't wait to hear back it'll after be great. your return. And hold down the fort without me. Uh, Scott, are you free next week? Oh, gosh. You guys will get <laughs> nothing done. Party at the DDA That's office. That's right. Have a good week, everyone. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>